Every now and again, all museums must make a tough decision on what to keep and what to sell. And they go through their holdings, uh, making the decisions by looking for duplicates and uh, things that no longer fit the museum for whatever reason. In the big museums, often it's just duplicates and, and uh, pieces they already have elsewhere. They, they're going to sell something off to make room for something else. And very often they sell things to fund new acquisitions to fill holes in their collection. And that's sort of what's happening right now. And it's going to be happening at Asia Week at Bonhams in New York on the 18th of March. They're going to be deaccessioning 192 lots from the Metropolitan Museum's uh, collection, all of it unreserved, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. And what's interesting is, is, is what you're going to find is when you look at this auction, are going to be where these pieces came from. The museum was founded on um, August or April 13th, 1870. And uh, soon after it was established, uh, a, a consortium of very well-heeled uh, benefactors, collectors, curators, um, uh, industrial revolution magnets, and so forth, all got together and they started donating things. And uh, very fortunately for us, a lot of the stuff that they donated were, were Chinese works of art, because at the time, interest in the Orient in Asia, the, the mystery of Asia and all that, after 1870, 1880, onward, up right up through the, the beginning of World War II, there was an enormous amount of interest in the Orient and in Asia and in China in particular. And uh, happily, uh, many of these earliest gifts to the museum were from these benefactors, and they were sort of a show of the kinds of things that were available. And many of them are objects and types that you don't see that often anymore uh, in the auction market or the antique market. And uh, a lot of the pieces in the auction, you'll find uh, provenance going back to the Avery family and people like that who were donating, the, the, the Clark family, people who were donating very, very early um, in, in the museum's formation, 1870s, 1880s, 1890s, and a few later, late editions, you know, from people in the 1950s. Uh, but what they're doing is they're going to go, they've gone through it, and they've decided the few things they're going to sell. Many of the pieces came from Yamanaka Company, all these C.T. Lou and all this sort of thing, uh, the Rockefeller family. And uh, in the video uh, that's following right now, we're going to be talking with Dessa Goddard. She is the Vice President of Operations of the Asian Department at uh, uh, Bonhams. Uh, she's a global director of the firm. She oversees the sales of uh, Chinese art in Hong Kong and so forth. She, she's the person to talk to. And uh, the other day, she and I had a very long uh, conversation. We went through the auction, and uh, we're going to go through it sort of piece by piece. Not every piece, but a number of them in a very relaxed sort of just conversation about the objects and, and what she thinks of them and, and uh, her, her impressions and my impressions and that sort of thing. So enjoy. Well, this is going to be a look at the upcoming sale that's going on at Bonhams in New York on March 18th. It's an interesting auction, I think. And I wanted to talk to our guest here, who is Dessa Goddard. She's the vice president uh, of Bonhams. She's the head of, what is it, U.S. Operations? Yeah. Asian art? Operations for Asian art, yes. So mm -hmm. You're the big dog, as they say. Both. <laughs> <laughs> And I wanted to talk to you about it because the uh, catalog I found to be so interesting and and where the stuff came from. And a lot of the material I noticed in the catalog are very typical of the kinds of things we used to see around New England from old collections back yes. 40 years ago with, with old houses on the North Shore of Boston, Beacon Hill, because it was the same crowd, the same that same circuit of people that funded the MFA and put things in there and funded the Met and put things in there. And they all were sort of in the same social group at the time during the 1880s and 90s up through the 1930s. And that was, of course, the magic period of collecting. And uh, I, I noticed a lot of, um, of uh, familiar, what I would call familiar faces in this auction. And um, tell me, just tell us, briefly how it all came about and, and and what was the uh uh what led to this sale did, did you have to go banging on their door or did they decide to do it or no, what no they they you know the met conducts from what i understand conducts an annual review of their collection to make to you know to look at it to to actually um you know look at duplicates or things that are near duplicates or things that may not be as good or damaged in in things that they own and so then they decide that they would invite auction houses in to you know propose to sell the collection and um fortunately for us we were chosen to uh, and hired by the met to conduct this sale and we're absolutely delighted it's a great honor 
And uh, we, find, we find it incredibly interesting because this also in me personally, I find it interesting because I'm very uh, fascinated by the development of philanthropy in the United States in the late 19th century. And this hits, you know, the nail on the head with these 24 philanthropists and, you know, gilded age personalities that um, decided to um, give their collections and found you know, four museums in, you know, between 1870 and 1880. The Met was founded in 1870. And within the same 10 years, you have the MFA and you have, you know, uh, Chicago and you have, um, you know, um, let's see, where where's the other museum? Oh, Philadelphia. The Philadelphia Museum, yeah. Right. When it, in Kansas City and those places came along a little later, right? In, in the 1930s, yeah, late 20s, early 30s. Heading into World War One. Yes. Or two, rather, World War II. But, and some of those museums were founded like in at the beginning of the Depression, which is really fascinating because you know some people survived the Depression with their money intact and decided that they were going to found, found major museums. So, but but back to the Met, um, it's you know it's there were twenty four um, philanthropists, um, members of the Gilded Age and their wives that, you know, who are the subject of this sale and, you know, selected pieces that they decided to give to the Met, that the Met decided to, um, sell. Mm -hmm. it, and what we've done in the catalog, as you notice, Peter, is we've profiled every donor so extensively, not just with their you know, interest in Asian art, but for everything that they've done to the institution and how they grew their business and, you know, what contribution they made to American life in this period. And that was, that was as fun for us as actually handling the objects themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, we believe that enthusiasm, um, you know, was part of hopefully why the Met chose us to do this. I want to put the catalog up because I think it's a, a really, a, a lot of our users have seen it. I've posted the catalog in book form on our site. I have a thing that converts it back into a catalog because uh, not everybody does this, does catalogs anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to uh, pop up right here. There it is. And uh, I like the red cover. It grabs your eye. I, I suppose that was the purpose of it. And yeah. you have this uh, bounty of great photographs from the Met. Um, which, which the, some of these I haven't seen this this couple of these before because they they don't always. Uh, there were other auctions of some of their things in the past, yeah. and some of these photos I don't recognize, but I know they're part of that same room, but or series of rooms. Right. And getting down here, you have the um, the 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 exhibition catalog from 1867, right? And that was at the very beginning of yeah. all of this, right? Yes. Yeah. Avery, Avery was one of the representatives and was on the board of, of one of the people who organized that exhibition and an advisor to it. Yeah. And so You've got Mr. Freer here. Yes. And there's this room. And lots of, lot, lot, the photographs are amazing. The photographs are just great to lead into this. And what we tried to do, if you see these photographs, is we, we, we use... Magnif mag high density mag magnification to try and relate some of those objects in the photographs. On those cases, yeah. And so yeah. We, we think we did a pretty good job of doing that. Yeah. And uh, here's Mr. Avery. Uh, who is this, Mr. Avery? Mr. Avery, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, he, he, he started out as an engraver, right? Isn't he? Wasn't he? That's correct. That's correct. And then, wood, wood cuts and things from newspapers and publications. Yes. Sort of yeah. new side. It was almost what Curry and Ives were doing, same time. Exactly. And then he went, after he got married to Mary Ogden, um, he, you know, they decided to travel the world. And he was a collector of European objects and then decided to just go into the art advisory collecting business. And one of his, you know, great um, uh, sponsors was, um, you know, were a number of people. Uh, Walters was probably his best sponsor. And they traveled together to Paris and he, you know, he helped him, you know, collect for the Walters Gallery. And, um, you know, his brother was ambassador to China for a very, very short time, I think probably a year and a half. Uh, but that opened some doors for him to collect more uh, Chinese art. And then by the time he 
um, uh, accumulated a number of works. He donated about 1,300 Chinese and Japanese works of art, uh, particularly Chinese porcelain to the Met. And that is basically 79 of those objects are part of this deep session. And, and he was worked as also as an art dealer. That's between, correct. Between That's Europe correct. and America. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, had some success there. Mm -hmm. And uh, th oh, there's a debonair portrait of him. Very debonair. And that's his wife, who also you know, helped him in his collecting. And she actually accumulated a collection of spoons. And if you'll see on the next page of the catalog, that is her collection of spoons. Oh. <laughs> that uh, were featured in a Met exhibition. In you know, 1893. Right. He was part of the founding 50 that founded, you know, that made the right. Museum, you know, possible. One of the original committers, so to speak. That's correct. That's committed correct. To funding the museum. Yeah. And then straight into the goods, as they say. Right. And uh, <laughs> this was uh, one of his very compressed yeah. uh, sort of uh, uh, blue and white piece. What do you think that is, a 19th century piece or Kangxi? Kangxi? It's Kangxi. There yeah. are Yep. small pieces that are part of this collection, not only, you know, porcelain, but also soft paste porcelain, which is a yep. you know, particular type of porcelain where, you know, it's a thinner body, the body composition is different, and it really absorbs the cobalt blue in a very sort of milky, creamy way. So it right. sits yep. quite differently. And some, so we have a number of those objects, not only from the Avery group, but but also from other collectors. Um, yeah, when I first started, when I first started in the business, there were old time dealers around that if you found a piece of soft paste, they'd always tell you it was English. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> and then offer you a lot less money. Um, but these yeah. are beautiful, beautiful examples. Yeah. So the beginning. Um, now, is that soft paste? This one? Um. No. Mm -mm. No. Okay. I was just Practical. wondering about that. You have but I think that's sort of an interesting and unusual. That's what this is a classic of what you find in a New England house. Ah, uh, yes, I that kind of thing. Yes, um, true. Lots of good Kangxi plates with Femi uh, uh, with um, uh, Chad Wa marks on them. Right, exactly. This, this is sort of unusual. It's very unusual. The design is is uh, quite striking. We believe it's a small piece, but it's absolutely lovely. It's about what seven inches tall. Seven and a half inches, yeah. No, and there's the picture of it in situ with the in one of the larger photographs. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a rare to... pattern. The pattern mm -hmm. on that's un a very unusual. It is, isn't it? What kind of shape is it in? Well, it's you know, it's sort of like a compressed ginger. And no, no, I know. Is it is it repaired or anything? Oh, what kind of condition is it in? Yeah. It's in condition. Oh, okay. Because I, I love the fact that it still has its lid, and I was wondering if the lid was repaired. Because no. often lids are fixed because people used oh, to I... drop them. Right. Yes. The, the or cleaning... often lid for that piece. <laughs> well, it, it, you see, you see around here, you see a lot of vases, big vases. You get them out of houses, the the eighteen, twenty inch, twenty five inch vases, and around the mouths, you always find chips. Yes. And I learned years ago that was because they had a lot of these old houses had soapstone sinks. And oh. the servants, when they cleaned porcelain, were very careless in the sinks with them. And they used to bang the mouths of the vases, rinsing them out because they'd smell inside. And they'd bang yeah. the mouths of the vases either on the edge of the soapstone sink or against the iron faucet. How and fascinating. Chips. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a good that's a, an addition to my toolbox. Thank you. An, an old Yankee, what a, a name you would know. Uh, they had servants, and they told. She told me this. She said, "Oh, the, we were told that was because the servants used to bang them, oh and uh, they well, they didn't care." Well, that's why you find gilding stripped off of things because around here they used to routinely wash porcelain um, mm. with a with a concoction that had a lot of ammonia in it. Mm. Ammonia oh, will take off, but take off gilding like nothing. I won't bother the enamel, but it'll strip away the porcelain, strip away the gilding on the porcelain. Mm. Mm. Now this is an unusual pattern. I love as well really stunning yes with the leaping carp the, you know, yeah, the leaping carp pattern which which the, you see on collect in you know really rare rare pieces but with the dragons running around on the outside no it's it's, it's a wonderful piece we're very pleased 
your I think your estimates are very modest, by the way. Would, well, by the way, the wholesale is being sold without reserve. Ah, okay. Yeah, I noticed that. I should have started with that right off the top, that you don't see many unreserved auctions these days. No, actually, you know, it's it's a, it's a good way to actually inspire people to bid when you can. And, you know, with the museum, they, you know, they want to move on and add to the pot to, you know, buy other things. And so this is this is a wise strategy. And we believe that it will really help the success of the sale. We're delighted that they allowed us to do this. An old fashioned white glove sale. Yes. <laughs> That's so what they call it you know we did this with the roger cavern sale two years ago in the summer because roger was you know uh wanted to move his stock on and we you know, that, that auction lasted 16 hours the first auction uh -huh. because people were just bidding all the time we hope that doesn't happen with 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 the met but you never know oh <laughs> uh, well 16 yeah. hours isn't the record though i think skinner boston uh, um, beat that i they had a they had a sale in there one day. I think I swear the thing went twenty hours. My gosh! Mm. You know, they had it was a massive sale, and um, I don't think they'll be doing it again. But it was they they sort of were in a position where they had to do that sale, and they did it. So they went through about nine auctioneers, and then you have this. I thought was very striking. This was one of the people. Like, yeah, with the peacocks around the edge. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you know, um, you know the peacock room, which was something that you know we, I guess, uh, Mr. Leland had, you know, sold that in the late 19th century to Charles Lang Freer, who then you know set up his peacock room in the Met because um, it's just an absolutely stunning, stunning um, motif to find on a blue and white conch dish. Right, and it's 15 inches in diameter on mm -hmm. top. It's a big one. It's a big it's, one. So it's a beast. And, it, and, it, and the, the perfusion of cobalt, yes, um, is pretty amazing. Uh, I have to say, and this struck me. And this is basically the 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 the, the aster pattern, I guess, is what you tip mm -hmm. to me. But it's an unusual shape for a kangxi pot. It is, and it's a lovely piece. We sold a similar one at Bonhams, um, um, I believe, last year, and it brought an astoundingly good price. So we're we're very hopeful for this example. So I thought it's it was just awfully attractive, and you have nice cobalt pieces. Yes, and then some nice these these are good lots if if you have somebody in the trade where they can buy and break it up and sell it. You know, I hate to say it that way, but that's what it no, is. No, look, this is this is a sale for people at all price points. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That is what you want. Now mm -hmm. these are all uh, 19th century, but these are they have that. This is these are see these these are the kinds of things like they have that dry brown dressing on the on yeah. the shoulder and base, right? And right. Sort of exactly. Emulating bronze if they yeah. clad the piece in bronze, but the but this is not these are not the types that you ever see anymore. No, they're not. Particularly with the underglazed red decoration, you know yeah. this. These are these are quite unusual, but even with the pattern, just yes. the general pattern. Usually, it's it's you know Femi Rose or Femi Bear with you know the standard right. scenes. Right. But, but but you have another jar in here that has the has the figure on the lid as well. And yes, if, if for people that like nineteenth century Qing pieces that are you know Chai, Chai Qing Daoguan, I assume mm -hmm. that's when these are probably done somewhere in yes. that those two eras. Yes. Um, that that technique of applying this uh, this brown uh, dressing mm -hmm. um, usually wasn't put on jars that looked like this. So I thought I, they were awfully nice. And I agree. They're uh, how big are they? Six or seven inches, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six right. and a half, seven inches. Yeah. Right. And then we get down to the big boy, the big. Oh yeah. Yes. Um, we have a we have a few of this large size kanchi period pieces in the sale, you know, garnitures, et cetera, the, you know, some from Avery and, and others. Um, they're, you know, really, really lovely. Um, and oftentimes they do, you know, they're part of a garniture. They're, right. We do garniture later on in the sale that's um, quite lovely. Isn't there one, isn't there a garniture set of these in the British Museum that got smashed to bits years ago and they, they had to re-glue them all together? Oh dear! <laughs> somebody, somebody, uh, somebody in the museum bumped them going down a stairwell. Oh my God! Mm. And they made a video about the restoration of them all. They shattered them, and they had no insurance on them. 
And uh, but it was one of these, and it was in a, a jar. There was a jar, I think, like this in that 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 lot that got not a lot, but grouping. Then you've got these nice little cafe au lait pieces. I wanted to get. I wanted to get over to this. Yes. This, this little jar on the right. Um, yes. Unusual as all get out. Yes, it is. Um, mm -hmm. And the lid itself is is a European. It's what? What is it? It's the lid is European. Yeah, you mentioned the lids replaced, but but the but the the pattern. The pattern um, is very highly unusual, but it is Chinese. It's oh yeah, no, I get it. It's Chinese. It just but the minute I saw it, I said the one on the left is a very familiar, you know, sort of transitional early Kang Shi face. Right, right. And, but the one on the right is a very unusual pattern. And I agree. The lot with is estimated pretty modestly, twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred. And I, I think you'll blow through through that like Sherman through Atlanta. Um, <laughs> you no, know, because it's it's good looking. You know, it's it's, it's striking. And then you have a, a couple of more uh, 18th, 19th century pieces. And then you I get this. Love this. Yes, it's a wonderful piece. Really, uh, this, yeah, Sorry. brush pot by Tong. Um, mm -hmm. But did you do you have any comps of, of of identical mates to this that you're familiar with? Not really. Um, you know, there are patterns that certainly illustrate, you know, the um, um, a story that's similar to that, you know, uh, but we we haven't been able to find a direct comp. Mm -mm. Well, yeah, the archer of the horseman, but you have the boat scene on the other side. Right. right. Yes. There, there's some there's some, um, you know, we're, we were trying to relate it to uh, the Xishangji. Um, to a particular chapter, but the chapters sort of get confused later on in, in that period. So we do believe it's um, the our hero uh, running off to take the imperial exams while his woman in the boat, his 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 lover in the boat waits sort of forlornly. Right. But yes, that's how we have cataloged it. In any Waiting way. on the shore. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's the estimate in this? Five to 6,000? Six to eight? Yeah. Six to eight. It's an awful well, rare it brush pot. Do more if it didn't have the chip. It was what? It does have a chip on the rim. So yeah, yeah. But, but it's it's a stunningly beautiful piece. Again, another one of those these things that you used to see. We used to see a lot of these around here. These crackled weird celadons. They were endlessly popular. Well, Next. this, you know, the this uh, this sale has a number of really lovely small monochrome monochromes in it. You know. Yep. Like, not only from Avery, but from others, um, and um, you know, it's it it ties the sale together very nicely in terms of those people who are interested in collectors who are interested in in this material. And this one, mm -hmm. yes, wonderful piece. Late and that's Qing. that's what uh, uh, late Chudlong, early Jai Qing period. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's eight inches, so it's one of those small birds. Those those yes. those. Uh, delicate little ones and that but was it, avery was a big monochrome buyer huh yes as were others you know there are there are a number of pieces from later collectors or uh, contemporary collectors whose pieces we have in the sales some really really beautiful uh powder blue monochromes um copper red monochromes yeah yes that creamy that creamy beauty right there it's no, that's, that's got a very modest uh, estimate, and it's 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 quite uh, and it's a soft paste molded example with dragons. Yes, very attractive. That's very attractive. Extremely, um, yes. Now, how? What are you? Eighteenth century, right? Do you think it's Kangxi, maybe or Chidlong? Chidlong? Yeah, right. I think probably more Kangxi than Chidlong, but yeah, um, okay. We We've, uh, we split the difference, 18th centuries. It's kind of different. I know, I know. No, I know, I know. It's, it's, and then this nifty lot with that box, the, the, uh, uh, oh, yes. Isn't that, that's wonderful. No, you didn't want to lot that separately, no? Ah, <laughs> uh, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the, the, the glaze on a number of these monochromes is 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 really really lovely, and you know it really has caught the eye of a number of people who have come into view already. Um, all those sales two weeks away. Yeah, I bet. Well, also mm -hmm. the, the you know the the magic of things that haven't been on the market in a hundred years. Right. Exactly. 
exactly. It's really a chance to buy something that's been in, you know, this major fantastic institution. And you know? it's all it's it's coming from a very romantic sort of period. It's true. It's true. You know, um of of you know things pouring out of C T Lou era and all these guys going back and forth and um the, the Morses and here in Boston and, and all them going over there and everybody fighting over who gets what and it's <laughs> Bigelow, you know, yep. lots of famous people from around here. And this is quite attractive. It's aubergine. Um, this is Peter's, uh, uh, Samuel uh, Avery, right? Avery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The next Love one up is one of my favorites. Well, it seems to glow pretty well, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? <laughs> and the rim looks nice, very thinly decorated. And then I love this. It. Oh, it's, it's elegant, so elegant, this piece. It's sort of a grayish blue. Is that the, is that the mm -hmm. color right there? Yes. It is. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the estimate's low. Thank you. Three to five thousand <laughs> for that. And then this I'm just oh. I'm just I'm just looking at it saying the provenance, the history, the, the Yes. Well exactly. Everything comes together to, you know, and, that and, that and, will bring people to the table. Absolutely. But also uh, getting back to my first comment was that these are the kinds of things that you see a lot of, we see a lot of the things that have been recycled over and over in styles that became very popular in the last 40 years. But the things that were very popularly collected back then are sort of gone into, a lot of them are institutions like this. And now they're coming back out. And yep. and, and you're only going to get a, like this piece here. You don't have, you have, you don't see this, this type of uh, a guan type pottery turning up. No. no, and and this was a was this another Avery piece? Yes. Yeah. Well, he must have had a lot of fun. And that this, this is absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning. You just pick this up and it just shines in your hand. Yes. And it's emulating what an iron glaze, yeah. an mm -hmm. iron finish. Yes, it's a combination of iron and mag and mag manganese glaze. It's just it's beautiful. Right, but when I first saw it, I thought it was like I thought it was an a piece of iron, an iron, an actual iron metal, mm -hmm. metal work. It looks like metal work, but it's not. Yeah, mm -hmm. and nine nine inches tall. Yes, fifteen hundred. Whoops, fifteen hundred to two grand. Right. Twenty five hundred. That seems very reasonable. Thank you. And there's this piece. There's your piece with the cover that you like so much. I just, well, it just struck me as being somebody very clever put this together with that top. I agree. In that nifty little carving. Mm -hmm. and it's, what is it? Is it it's, um, um, uh, boxwood? It's boxwood. You know, I, I think that it probably is, was once an Ashinaga, you know, one, a Netsuke. Right. That had yeah. a stand on linked figure that, you know, uh, was incorporated into the design of the cover. Yeah. Well, a lot of places did that. Yamanaka did that with a pile of things. Yeah. I have an inkwell here from Yamanaka that was, as their, you know, their signature on the, their Yamanaka company on it. It's a silver brush pot, ink, ink pot, Langyao, with mm -hmm. a jade dragon head on top of the inkwell to lift it. And it has... Um, um, all kinds of stuff been screwed into it by Yamanaka, and they just cannibalize things. Mm -hmm. oh, but this mm -hmm. is a great package, and this is a, a very how old is it? Mid nineteenth century, you think? Um, yes, I think it's probably um, oh, first half. Well, we say first half. It could be possibly you know 1850, 1860. We yeah. do have some some like examples that certainly were you know we could date to before eighteen seventy. Okay, so. Yes, that's how we've positioned this piece. But very unusual. Yep. Very unusual in the central band there. Jeez. And then this lot mm -hmm. with the um, the magic. Uh, oh, yes, yes. The vase. The vase in the center is little, really. You called it a snuff bottle? Well, it's, yeah, it could be. It could be it's used as a magnum. Bottle. That are that that are that large, but um, nonetheless, it's a it's a lovely lovely design of women in in a lotus pond. Right, you know, it's very very lovely. And I like the cup. Actually, the cup and saucer on the right, on the left rather, is a, the one on the right I've seen, but the one on the left, yes, Yong Chen, 
Yes. It's very unusual pattern. Yes. So, again, the kind of unusual things you don't see very often. And then that big female rose. What are this now? Your chin lung, early chin lung. Early chin lung. Mm -hmm. it, it's got a hairline here, maybe on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yes. But what a pot! Yes, what a pot! So you're it's thinking seven. Seventeen... Huh? Yeah. It's what? It's standing alone in a very lovely case all by itself even during the preview. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. And a great uh, young Chen. Great uh, young Chen, early Chen Long piece. Mm -hmm. Now, would this originally had a saucer matching that or no? I know mm. they did my cups. But yeah, I, I know, know for the cups. I'm not sure with uh, with the, the pot itself. Yeah, um, I don't either. I was just wondering. That's wonderful. And you get down. There's the... There's uh, the Oh, yes. There's the bell of the ball. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, this beautiful uh, magnolia blossoming tree, you know, the Go ahead. It's it's beautiful. And, you know, the, the molding of the candles is superb. You know, the vase just shines and it's, um, you know, it's um, it's worth its weight, worth its money. And it has very shallow scraffito decoration on very it. Very shallow scraffito decoration, yes. I noticed that. Finely done. Yeah, really delicate. And is that blue aqua interior. There's a better full. That's the back of it, right? Yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then you have the we have Mandalong, Mandalong, which is basically the porcelain is made in China and then decorated in Thailand. And the story of, of the person who... Um, uh, sold the, this collection to the Met and other museums is um, um, capitalized capitalized on in our little uh, profile of him, a very, very handsome commander um, who spent a lot of his time in Thailand as part of a uh, delegation from Norway uh, to Thailand in the late 19th century and then fell in love with Bancharong and brought much of it back to the United States. Uh, uh, basically uh, Norway at first and then back to the United States and um, managed to place it in a number of museums, including the Met. The one on the end is unusually big. Yes. How, how, how big is the biggest one? Does it say in the list? Uh, mm, probably, let's see. 10 so, inches or so? Um, yep. Yeah. Hard for me to hear. Yeah, but, no, no, I was just... I, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of the people that watch watch our channel collect this stuff so oh I see mm -hmm. well <laughs> every, then I have an every, opportunity every time there's a piece of Benkrong turning up anywhere it always we talk mm -hmm. about it it always seems oh. to do well um so if to so the people out there who are attracted to these there's a chance to buy a set well just um point them all our way you know there there's you know the the quality varies among um on oh, the yeah in this lot. That's why we've closely lotted them together, but there are some lovely examples within it that make them uh, highly desirable. That's a wonderful detail. Yeah. No, I've always liked them. And then there's more of them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I remember going through this. There was, there was a ton of the stuff. So if yes. those of you who are into the Ben Kong way, there's your, this is your golden moment this year. Right. Well, you see, you know, what we've also done, you know, there are some pieces that some collectors that just have one piece in this auction, but we've given them pretty much equal due because, again, it's the idea of passion and philanthropy right. know, that we promote for the Met. So these people were big sponsors, big supporters of the Met while they were doing many, many other things in their lives. Yeah. And we, we certainly want that tradition to continue on um, among the museums today. So this is a plug for collecting and supporting your institution. Yep. And that's an unusual piece. Yes. <laughs> it's a mix of many designs. Mm. And then you get nice. You, yes, yeah. your Ami Barrett, in which we have a few choice examples in the sale. That's, that's pretty striking. The negative space makes it jump out. That's right. Yes. It makes it very three-dimensional. Mm. Oh, Jacob Rogers. is yes. His stuff yes. now? Nice Rogers um, that 
um, you know, garnitures, et cetera. A lot of very lovely blue and white in this group. Didn't he also fund the museum pretty heavily? And there's yes. a lot of things that a Rogers fund purchase. Well, he basically his uh, he these are Rogers fund purchases. He gave, according to our biography, anyway, he gave about five million dollars in kind in, in you know worth of um, assets to the museum to fund, to to start the Rogers fund, and. Okay. Used not only to buy things such as this, but also, you know, for paintings and other works of art in which, you know, the museum has benefited enormously. Yeah, yeah. No, I've seen this. At that time was a lot of money. <laughs> well, it was a huge amount of money. And it, every time I've been down there, you re, I always read the, the stickers, the, the, the labels on things. And you see Rogers Fund purchase pretty often. Yes. Now you have this striking Kangxi pot. Oh, wonderful, yes, terrific. And and then this. I love this design. It's it's really compelling, isn't it? It it, it it's a type that yeah. you see, but this is how big is this thing? Um, it's about twenty inches. Yeah, it's 20. a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, twenty inches in height. Because mm -hmm. you see this pattern more often on smaller things. Yes. So it's a, this is a beast. Mm. And that's a beast. Yes. Very nice. And then here you have this wonderful molded. You, it's hard to see in this in this photograph the fact that these are the the sides of this are have vertical molds to them. Right. Right. And these are large. Oh, these yeah. are and they're large. Yes. They're not. I think they were nineteen inches or so. Yeah. Nineteen to twenty inches. Yes. Let's see. Da, 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 um, da. Yeah, 19 and a half inches. Yeah. So these are very big. So it's important to know because it's hard from a photograph to get a sense of scale. Absolutely. And you can look at these and say, oh, you know, 10 mm -hmm. inch garniture, Kangxi, but 20 inch Kangxi garniture, that's a different thing. Well, we've tried to, you know, I believe all auction houses um, try and give you a matter of scale in their photography. If they don't, <laughs> Um, then it can be a problem. So, you know, this has a whole full full page illustration and, um, you know, it's, it's it's a stunning set. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I've been through that. I once bought from an auction house in Florida, a giant transitional period charger that was 22 inches in diameter. And I thought it was a nine inch plate and they had no Chinese buyers. So I threw a bid on it and I got it for a hundred dollars. And when the shipper called me, he said, the shipping's 444 bucks. And I said, what? And he said, well, the plate's enormous. It's over two feet wide. <laughs> the photograph had no sense of size in it. Fine. And uh, I got it. I was extremely pleased. All right. Oh, there it is. Crossing the Delaware. Why, why was this in here? What was the? Well, no, no. As I said, we're trying to show everything that this collector oh, okay. gave to the institution. He and gave so this? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I didn't know that. Oh, yes. But the, the reason I, I noticed, I know the bit about this painting is that because all of the men paddling this boat, mm -hmm. all of the oarsmen on this boat were from my hometown. Ah! They were all from Marblehead, Mass. Oh, my. Oh, okay. And Washington wanted them because they were, well, they were notorious pirates, but they were also very daring sailors. Mm. And they were the only ones that would get in the boat with them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. John Stuart Kennedy, right. Made that possible. Great gift. Oh, I love, I love yes, this is you you see these quite a bit. You know, yep. I've seen many, many of these in, in my career, but you know, you have them in the context of other monochromes and they you know they come to life. Yeah. Yeah, I've had I've had these too, and they're they're they they for years everybody thought they were 19th century um yes. Dealers always, oh, it's a 19th century pot. It's, you know, it's nothing. And mm -hmm. um, we would buy them happily. Okay. Um, and then you have this very strongly colored. Yes. Um, Upper red. Yes. It's yeah. Neat. Probably Chin Lung, I would think. But mm -hmm. is it is it finished nicely around the foot? Is it very neat? Well, it has, you know, the plain Chen Lung, you know, 18th century monochrome, you know, slightly recessed base. So Right, right. But the yes. base underneath is nice and, you know, okay. Yeah. Yes. The color is great. Well, the Fletcher's, you know, the Fletcher monochromes in the sailor are lovely. They're very nice. 
very strong color. Same with this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yes. another one. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And then, oh, yes. Wonderful piece. This looks like one of those things they'd blow the glaze on with a straw. Yes. Mm -hmm. Powder blue. Mm -hmm. And how, how big is this one? Powder blue, nine and a half, nice size. Mm -hmm. Unusual. You have so much unusual stuff in here. Well, that's, and then of course there's the Harkness group. Um, uh, this is one, yes, just one piece. This mallet vase is terrific. We've used this in some advertising. It just, yeah, it's- I remember seeing it. And the, you know, and the shape is, is rare. High shoulder on it. Yes. Nice pattern. Beautiful flowers. And this came from the the, the this their collection. No, it's Harkness. Uh, oh, the Harkness. previous one. The previous. Harkness. Okay. Yeah. Another name you 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 see. Yes, all that the you time. want. Yes. Um, I just the, thought I thought the, the the figure standing on a plinth like this. Typically, it's a full lion or just a single figure. And in this, it's it's a it's a standing figure holding a child with two kids around them, and I just think the package is just such an unusual um, combination for these biscuit wares. That's all. It just struck me as uh, you know, for people that like things that are unusual, and it's got a it's got a couple of hairlines in it and stuff, and maybe a repair here or there, but very unusual type. This piece was given by Mary Clark Thompson. And she is the she was the daughter of the um, of the former of former governor of New York, and her husband was the founder of um, the City Bank of New York, which became City or the, the the Bank of New York, which then became City Bank. So she was quite a wealthy woman. We discussed her earlier offline. Yeah. And uh, this this is one buy dishes. <laughs> yes. This is this is wonderful. It does have some damage, which is why it's estimated the way that it is. But it's a very provocative piece. Yeah, but what a piece of porcelain! Mm -hmm. You know, is that the description? Yeah, there it is on this side. Three to four thousand. It's a foot over a foot tall. Okay. Yes. So it's a big, bigger piece. We're getting into pretty. Oh, yes. is Young Shen from Mill Rose, I assume. Is it Young Shen or? Yes. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Peter, right. you're great. Huh? <laughs> I'm what? You're great. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm just I'm just yeah. looking at it saying that looks young chin. Well, so a lot of times you know, oh no, it's early chin long, you know, you can't be yes, you're right on. You know, it's hand grenades sometimes. Now this this William Rhinelander Stewart is uh was one of our is one of our favorite people because he really had an interest in in soft soft paste porcelain. Uh, wow. he, he was a very, very serious collector, and um, as was his daughter, who was, who was absolutely gorgeous. She was called Princess uh, Brizanga, I believe, oh. and she gave a few pieces to the Met. Um, but he had an especially strong interest in soft paste porcelain, and we actually took this opportunity to write a little something in the catalog about soft paste. Um, which this is not, but as you scroll down, you will see them. But he loved blue and white. Sure did. That's a nice clap at the bowl. Mm. People always chase these. That's yeah. not. There are certain patterns I really, really like. And this is the song. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yes. You can see how the cobalt sort of be, has this sort of creamy, it just sort of sinks into, you know, the body of the piece. It's really, really striking when you hold these in your hand. You know, of course, they're quite thin, thinly constructed pieces, but they're, they're stunningly beautiful. Oftentimes, if they're a little over fired, they, you know, they, there's too much crackle in soft paste. But if, you kept, if they're caught just the right, they're they're just stunningly beautiful, and the design here in this base in particular is just lovely. Well, isn't that because the the, the porousness of soft paste allows the cobalt to absorb yes. when it's heated, and yes. it's liquid, it sort of melds into it. It's a little less hard edged than you know right. than you know than um, your normal blue and white porcelain. 
So this guy was way ahead of the curve on soft paste. <laughs> oh, he was. He was. You see it in within the, the within the catalog, but this is really the core group that we have focused on. Look mm -hmm. at that. Oof. The design is wonderful. It's um, the shape is wonderful, and it conforms beautifully. The two of them work together to make a. Well, it's a well-known design, but they they, yeah. they use they yeah. took they took full advantage of the shape. That's correct. To get the to get it all in there. Very clever. And that I've actually had that jar. That jars like that. That mm. before. Mm. There was a, a some stuff that came from the Agassiz family up here years ago. Oh yes. And I bought a lot of it. And uh mm. there was a jar that looked very similar to that. What's on the other? Is that is that the main de decoration on that bottle? No, it's your turn to keep going, keep going. Oh, yes. okay, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, stunning willow tree. Great willow tree. Yes. And again, they took full advantage of the shape. They worked it in right to the edge, the visual edge. And b the Blumenthal's. Mm-hmm. Early, early, early stuff. Mr. Rollins also loved. He was a he was an author of um, Western. Um, oh, poetry. yes, yeah, yes. He that's the guy that wrote those. Yes, and he was a collector. Yes, I never knew that. I knew though. I knew those books though. Mm -hmm. Now, did he collect Western stuff too, or that I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, uh, the um, the black lace bottle does is is it's wonderful. Very striking, yeah. Very striking. Seven inches of diameter, uh, unreserved. Now, right, we could not find a photograph of Robert West. We scoured and scoured and could not find a photograph. So we don't have a oh, photo. Really? Oh. But he had great taste. And he collected a lot of Chinese porcelain. Nine inches. Mm -hmm. That's is a dry surface on that. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I love that cup. Mm. Now this is a strange one. Yes. Uh, it looks Japanese. <laughs> That's what I said when I first saw it. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it looks like an 18th century Japanese bottle. But it's not. <laughs> so it wasn't, so the Japanese weren't the only ones, you know, because for years, you know, when they did learn to make porcelain, they were copying Japanese stuff that they were familiar with, the blue and white wares, especially the, the Wan Li copies and all that. So the river went the other way in this case. The Chinese made one in, of their style. Now, would they have made that for the Japanese market per se or? That's a that's a source of speculation. I would yeah, say. Yeah, no, I know. I'm I'm speculating. No, I, it's it's <laughs> never know. Um, but yes, that is that struck me. You know, because of my interest in in experience in Japanese art, it struck me like a tokuri. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but the but the decoration is very would be very atypical for them. But the shape was bang on, nailed it. Yes. Yeah. Five to eight thousand, no reserve. And these are terrific. I always like these. I've always loved these these turquoise things. Mrs. Bingham, yes. Eight to twelve hundred for the lot. Yes, as they say. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> very reasonable. That's handsome too. That's very pretty. Yes, this has a great provenance. 10 inch jar, 11, 11 inch. Yeah. And it has its lid. Yes. Garland collection, Morgan collection. With the leaf pattern on it. That's nice. And this beautiful. Right. Great beautiful. color. Yes. Great color. It's that strong, that blue? Yes. Really? No. Mm -hmm. Six inches. Very nice. And another one. And these are all from the Brigham's. And then you had just, you got a pile of jades. 
Yes, we have um, a lot of jades from Mr. Peters, the Peters collection uh, that he gave in three three installments between 1911, 1913, and 1960. Yep. The first two he purchased from Yamanaka. Right. Uh, okay. We don't know the background of the third group, but um, but at the time of the gift, you know, knowledge of about you know um, the dating of Chinese jades was not what it is today. And so these were accepted as early pieces. And now time has moved on. And <laughs> we know that they are, we've dated them all as late Qing dynasty. Um, but the designs, you know, harken back to Shang and Zhou prototypes. And some of them are ab absolutely beautiful. So. Um, this was very common back then. Yes. I yes. The Peters collection, though, is the, the, that was a massive collection. A very big collection, not only of, of um, Chinese, well, but also uh, porcelains and uh, Korean works of art. Yep, I know. Mm -hmm. They um, it, there was a very rare piece of they had they 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 used to give Chinese and Japanese and Korean art as wedding gifts to people pretty routinely and as presents. Mm -hmm. Because I there are several there's a couple families on the North Shore here that have passed down pieces and they say, Oh, this was came from our friend the Peters family or, or my grandparents' friends, yeah. Mm -hmm. Transitional sleeve bases, Korean underglazed red bases, that kind of thing. But rare birds, they used to give them out to people as as gifts. Well, this is a nice lot. These are all nice lots though. And they're you date them yeah. all the late Qing dynasty? Yes, we do. If people have different opinions, then they they can bid accordingly. But this is how we are representing them. Well, they often do with jades. Yes, they do. More cat fights over jade than anything else. The, the, you remember I've talked about it a number of times in my on the videos with everybody. But the, the famous pig jade yes. that was in the Irving collection with a five to seven thousand dollar estimate. Don't you wish? <laughs> These are charming, though. They're well done. Yes. And they're inexpensive. My goodness. I think there's 71 lots. This is the that's a wonderful opportunity. That necklace, that strong necklace. It's. Uh, How long yeah. is it? How long is it? Uh, let's see. But it's long. Yeah. Well, we don't. We don't actually measure the length of it no i know i know i just i thought maybe you'd throw it in <laughs> thank you <laughs> I don't like to speculate when i don't know yes. gift of samuel peters yeah mm -hmm. um so a little something to wear out to dinner <laughs> you don't think mrs peters might have worn that to a soiree i bet she might have Like that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a heck of a nice grouping. Even the <laughs> late Ching is fine as long as they're honestly dated. You know, that's the not done in the late Ching style, clearly. No. And who did he buy them all from? Yamanaka? The first, yeah, the we you see, we put them in, we've ordered them in except for the large necklace, which is a bit mixed. Um, we've ordered them by date of acquisition. So these are the 1916 pieces, but okay. we started out um, in the sale of the group of 1911 pieces, then 1913 pieces. And then we put the Omanaka provenance. You'll notice that on the 1916 dated um, acquisition date, there's no provenance because we don't know where he, he acquired that last group. You don't know absolutely, but pretty good chance he got him from Yamanaka. Um no. I speculate. I don't want to speculate. No, I know it's it's you don't want to stick your neck out. I get it. Yeah, it's fine. Uh And how many lots of jade are there? About 71. 71? About this is, 70. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Brush handle. Mhm. Mm is either a brush handle or a flute, one or the other. And there's a Interesting uh, 
example of a very Shang, uh, or uh, not Shang, um, Western Zhao? Zhao Zhou. Mm -hmm. Zhou Jade, yeah. You got a heck of a nice sale on your hands. Thank you very much. <laughs> we also have a various owner sale, which will should be up shortly. And that also has a mostly different kind of composition, although there are some early jades in that sale, but it's predominantly early material from the Hartman collection, part two. Yeah, yeah. And, and then a group, then we also have a sale of snuff bottles and Chinese paintings. So yeah. I saw and, those. Right. There are also three screens from the Met um, that are part of the um, the Japanese and Korean works of art sale. So there are th we split them off from the Chinese material because we wanted to have we did not want to mix the Japanese material with the Chinese material. No, I so so, there, so those are all Japanese screens from the Met. Yeah, I'm assuming there's no. just three lots, just three lots. Okay, and they're not Korean screens. No. Okay. All right. Well, you've been a busy, busy lady. We have been a little busy. Yes. Been a little bit busy. And I looked at the snuff bottle collection. It looks like there's some nice bottles in there. Yes. And right. um, the Japanese sale, I'm always interested in because I like Japanese things a great deal. And, and you know, I was always peeking around. I just lost a bit over the weekend on a piece I wanted somewhere. But. Oh, dear. <laughs> we also have a collection of um, Inro from the estate, at, from the collection of Joe and Helena, uh, Elena Kirsten. We sold their Netsuke about a, a year and a half ago in December. Yeah. It yeah, really, yeah, yeah. and this is part one of his in row their in row collection. So how, big is the, how big is their in row collection? Well, it's pretty big. Uh, we've got maybe sixty lots in this sale, so it's 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 this is just part one. Okay, all right, all right. Well, I wish you a great deal of luck. What else? <laughs> Do you have anything to say before we wrap this up? Is, you, well. Gotta... I Encourage people to come and look at the collection, and you know, it's an incredible opportunity to buy a piece of history. You know, it's been in this, it's been in the Metropolitan Museum of Art for over a hundred years. The vast majority of these pieces, and uh, well, well cared for, wonderful objects, and as I said, as we have said, to be sold with no reserve. So we're we're very honored to be able to present the collection, and very honored, Peter, that you decided that you are. Um, oh. Spending the time to talk with us. I'm just a little dealer. It's, it's, <laughs> Please. I'm just, I'm just a New England antique dealer, you know, but but I, I like what I do. So thank you very much for the opportunity. All right. Well, you have a very great success at it. And um um we're gonna do a video on on the the rest of the site. We're gonna do a, a one for all the other houses. We're doing one, sure. we're gonna do a video going through the lots, mm -hmm. sort of highlight pieces and sort of give a, a broader overview of all the other things that you're going to be selling. We Good. Tried that done this week and oh, uh, get right. it posted and take care of it that Good. way. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. Thank you, Peter. You're very, very welcome. Take care. Bye -bye. All right. Bye-bye.